What's up everybody, we're gonna get right into it. These are my best tips on how to ride the subway. I was not born and raised here, but all of these tips are from my experience being here for the last five years. I think it might be helpful to help explain the layout because once you know the layout and kind of the lingo that New Yorkers use getting around, it's easier to use the subways, honestly, because the subways don't use north and south. They use uptown versus downtown. So heading uptown means heading north, heading downtown means heading south. And just Knowing that alone will help you navigate the subway when you aren't familiar about what neighborhoods are in which direction of the train. Because I haven't seen a single subway sign that says a northbound train or southbound train. Talking about subways here, not like Amtrak or Long Island Railroad or anything. Before you get on the subway or before you even enter the platform, know which direction you're going and what train letter or number you need to take. And always navigate via train number and train letter versus train color. Almost every line has multiple numbers or letters that lead a different direction. There is a difference between the N, the R, the W, and the Q. They all will lead you into different spots. And so if you say, I'm gonna take the yellow train uptown, the train could end up going a different direction than you wanted. Understanding the local versus express lines and the stops on the map will very much help you. The local trains stop at every stop along the route, as you see dictated on your map by those little black dots. White dots signify express stops. It is helpful to know this when you're first moving here because there have been many times where I get on the wrong train and I need to transfer. And you would assume that every station you would have the ability to, to go back the way you came if you needed to. And while yes, you can do that, you may have to pay again, depending on what station you get off at. So if you ever need to change direction on a train because you just went the wrong way or for whatever reason, wait until you get to an express stop because that will provide you with a platform with a train going the opposite direction instead of having to leave the subway station crossing the street to get on that local platform going the opposite way, which means you would have to pay again. I'm sure there are exceptions to this, but generally in Manhattan, that's been the rule of thumb. And a local's advice, sometimes the express trains run local during certain times of the day, and sometimes the local trains run express at certain times of the day. You just kind of have to pay attention to the overhead speaker, which is not that reliable. The announcement system on the subways are, um, and you just see people like taking their earbuds out like, was that important? If you had your music in or you, you were reading and you weren't really paying attention to the announcements and you see people running off the train, maybe take that as a cue that you need to get off the train as well. There have been a couple times that's happened to me and I was like, but this is not my stop. Why would I be getting off the train? And then I realized I missed an announcement that this was actually the last stop on the train for no reason, but probably because of construction, especially on the weekends. But in terms of navigating, it's I've said this before in a couple other videos, it's just so helpful to have a subway map use used as your background on your phone. So if you at least know what train you're going on, what direction you're going, you know what to expect in terms of stops. And it's really good in a pinch so that you, way you don't have to like open an app. So now we're gonna get into tips for buying a Metro card. It can save you money to use an unlimited card for sure. I believe an unlimited card is $33 and the unlimited card is 127. I usually only buy an unlimited card when I know I'm gonna take more than 12 subway trips per week. Every single ride is $2.75. The only reason I got a weekly unlimited card versus the monthly unlimited card is only because I was just afraid I would lose the card. And I've seen that happen to a few people and then you're out $127 and have to repurchase your card. And there's really nothing you can do about it. So it's just up to you. If you're super organized, <laughs> you take more than 12 trips on the subway or bus per week, then by all means do the monthly unlimited. I think you will save five or six dollars a month. But just know that if you do get an unlimited card, you can't pause the time on it at all. So that kind of sucks if you end up not going anywhere that week when you thought you would. You want to avoid that if you can. Unlimited cards also have a 10 to 15 minute timer on it so that you can't scan more than once every 10 to 15 minutes. Sorry, the lighting is getting kind of crazy. It's a thunderstorm here in New York today. So one of my favorite new features that is now on all the buses and actually it's probably not even new. It's probably like a, a few years old but now it's in almost every subway station where you can scan your credit card into the turnstile to pay that way but just know that it, it is a scan like you hold the card on top of the little electronic pad you'll hear a click and then you can walk through i've seen people take their credit card and like swipe it through like a metro card and it doesn't work that way you can also use apple pay like hold your your phone on top of that 
electronic scanner and do that. But now it's on all buses as well. The only annoying thing is, is that you have all these separate charges on your credit card statement and that can be annoying for some people. For me, I don't really mind. It has happened a couple times where the scanner says Metro card only. I'm not sure why that is, but you may end up having to put value on a Metro card anyways. I don't know the reason for that. And it only lasted for a day. And I've only seen that happen once, but I guess it does happen. The Metro cards themselves do expire, but I think it takes like a little over a year for them to do that. So just make sure there's not any money on it. But I did see something in a YouTube comment on another video about a similar topic that I'll just read to you. If you have money left on an expired Metro card, don't throw away the card. If the expiration date is less than one year old, you can ask the clerk in the booth to transfer the fare to a new card. If the expiration date is more than one year old, ask the clerk for the prepaid envelope and form to mail the card to MTA and they will send you a new card with the fare on it. I have not tried that and I didn't even know that was an option, but this person says it is, so consider that an option. When you're putting money on a Metro card, they will ask you for your zip code. I use the zip code that's linked to the card that I'm using, but I've heard that people can use 999995 nines as their zip code if you're a traveler and that will work just as well. So that, cause I know zip codes in different countries are different lengths. If you've done that, please put it in a comment so we all know. Thanks. So this is gonna be my favorite part of the video. These are my pro tips from a local and they're all kind of random tips, but they're ones that uh, would have saved me a lot of stress and time had I known this sooner. Always keep $2.75 hidden in your wallet where you will forget about it. There was a time for me, at least at one point, uh, where you don't have any money to take the subway. Credit cards are maxed out. And if you find yourself in a situation like that, which it could happen, hopefully it won't, but it could happen, then you know you have a subway, emergency subway fare to get yourself home. So I just have a bunch of random tips to better your rider experience, things to look out for. The first one is to just avoid empty cars in general. I say this because the situations where this has been uh, helpful to know is either that subway car has no air conditioning, either that subway car has no heat. <sighs> I've seen feces on a car. It's just been like awful smells coming off of people sometimes. For whatever reason, just avoid the empty car. Always check your seat before you sit on it. <laughs> you just never know. Check it before you leave so that way you don't leave anything behind. Important. Do not fall asleep. I've heard horror stories about um, people taking a nap and then they wake up without a wallet. If you're comfortable with this, please carry self-protection. Tasers are legal in New York City to carry with you but please know how to use it. I'm not sitting here on YouTube telling you to buy a taser and then you accidentally tase yourself. Like, no, 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 I'm, I'm putting disclaimers in this video. Self-protection is really necessary sometimes. Be careful, just be careful. At night, I try and ride on subway cars with other people. I feel safer being on a car with other women than I do being on a subway car alone and then you never know who's gonna get on the subway at the next stop. Okay, next random tip, a little less dark. Don't scan your Metro card too fast. Scan it with the barcode toward you and do it just right. Not too fast, not too slow. <laughs> That's what she said. Ah, smooth pace wins the race. <laughs> that was good. This next pro tip. A lot of people aren't as fortunate to have the money to buy unlimited cards or to just ride the subway in general. If you have an unlimited card, scan people in on your way out. I say this knowing that this could very much be illegal, but I honestly don't really care. Help people out. <laughs> You've already paid for the unlimited card. It's been 10 to 15 minutes since you used the card to get on your train. As you're leaving the station, swipe somebody in. Even if you don't have an unlimited card, pay it forward. And if you see people jumping the turnstiles, just mind your own business. Ooh, I like this next one. Don't put any large bills into the subway to pay for your Metro card. Uh, because it will give you change in return, but not in bills. It will give you the golden Sacagawea coins that nobody wants to use as currency in the US, even though it is valid currency. So just try and pay with um, exact change as best you can. The larger ticketed machines take cash, the smaller ones don't. And you'll be able to tell the difference because there's like blatant um, dollars and cents signs on the machine that you're gonna use if you can use cash there. Um, but do pay attention to the message above. Sometimes it says cash only, sometimes it says debit credit card only, even if it is a machine that looks like it would take cash. So if there is going to be construction on a train line, usually there will be signs on the columns outside of the subway platform. And there will also be signs inside on the columns as you're about to get on the train that show you when this construction is going to be taking place. They 
give you alternate routes. They say the times that the subway line is going to be closed and if there's going to be a shuttle bus service. If train construction does direct you to a shuttle bus, just one, I'm sorry. It takes you 10 times longer to get anywhere on a shuttle bus and it's 10 times more uncomfortable because they jam pack those things, they really do. It's just a pain. So just allow that time if you know in advance. But delays and all, as we all know, I feel like it goes without being said that the NYC subway is just delayed central, delay, delay, delay. But it's still faster than taking a Lyft or an Uber or a taxi during rush hour. Take that into consideration if you're stuck on a train, delayed, and you're gonna be late for work, just stay on the train, stay on the train. Because then you won't have that added factor of paying an extra 40 bucks to get to work and also still be late. And in terms of my own personal opinion on train reputations, I hate the F train. Avoid living off of the F train at all costs. It's an extremely unreliable train and I also found that I don't like the C train or the B train because they don't run that often anyways. Always carry a protein bar and a water bottle with you at all times when riding the subway. It can take you a long time to get from point A to point B. The time it takes to get from like uptown Manhattan into the depths of Brooklyn is like an hour, hour and a half. If the train ends up stopping in, in between stations, it'll be nice to just have know you have water and a protein bar because that's not, not known to happen. I have been stuck in a subway in a tunnel without any service and was grateful that I had those resources for myself in case you're stuck there a little bit longer than you might be comfortable. So this is like subway etiquette. Take up this amount of space on a subway just for one person. Like if you have a bag, put it in your lap. And if you have like long legs, keep them together. Just try not to manspread. That is just a massive pet peeve of mine. Anyways, don't be a pole hog. Like don't wrap your arm around the pole so that no one else can hold on. So there you have it. I hope this was helpful for you. If you're new to my channel and wanna see some more NYC related content, I have an entire playlist that can help you in your preparation to move here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you like. Anyways, y'all have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.